If you think about it broadly, how can somebody possibly recognize that they're falling for a bad idea if they don't think that they're capable of doing so? Um, in order to protect ourselves from doing this, we need to be able to recognize that we're capable of holding bad ideas, and we need to be able to recognize them when we see them, by convincing ourselves that we would never be so silly as to do any of the kind of things, like the things that I've been speaking about. Uh, there's no way that we would act in this, uh, in this manner. By doing that, we're, we're lowering our guard and making ourselves even more susceptible. It can be very easy to forget, uh, especially when surrounded by such company, that there are people who do believe that the Earth is 6,000 years old. There are people who do believe that 9-11 was an inside job, or that the Earth is flat, or that it's ever okay to put pineapple on a pizza. <laughs> surrounded by company like this, it can be very, very easy to forget that these people do exist. It's, it's a scary prospect. Um, but I am certain, uh, this is one of the things that I've concluded, I am certain that, that uh, certainly most of the people in this room, including myself, hold at least one belief uh, that other people would look upon with such incredulity as we look upon beliefs like that. Um, I'm certain of it. And when I've spoken about this before, it, it always comes across quite pessimistically. There's no way to escape that. But uh, the question is always asked, well, people say that they, they don't like this. They don't like being told uh, that they're so capable of believing bad ideas and that our nature makes us so susceptible to it. So if you're ever feeling frustrated, if you're ever feeling uh, a bit downtrodden about the fact that you're capable of holding silly beliefs because of uh, certain mindsets that we all hold, it may console you to know that one of the best examples, or I suppose perhaps one of the worst examples of such behavior comes from none other than the most brilliant physicist of the 20th century. Uh, after Albert Einstein had um, completed his uh, calculations of general relativity, he noticed that his predictions, uh, sorry, his, his calculation predicted a universe that was not static. Um, effectively, uh, what this means is, is it was thought that the universe, um, it, the received wisdom in Einstein's day was that the universe was static. That means it, it's, it's unmoving. It's not growing. It's not shrinking with no beginning. It's not uh, headed towards an end. And a lot of people believe this for the sake of philosophical uh, convenience. Um, of course, if it did have a beginning or was headed towards an end, it would need explaining, and this was something that uh, couldn't be done as far as they were concerned. Um, and this was something, for better or worse, that Einstein believed. Now, when his uh, predictions, when his calculations predicted uh, a universe that was, uh, that was not static, uh, Einstein was faced with a problem. And, and, and you ask, what, what does the greatest physicist of the 20th century do when his calculations show him uh, that his view of the universe is wrong? Well, he altered his equation. On the left-hand side of the, of the equation, he added in uh, what he called a cosmological term, um, which effectively represented a, a repulsive force that spread throughout the entire universe, which counteracted the gravitational attraction of all matter and allowed the universe to remain static. And as far as he was concerned, that solved the problem. The universe was static. That is until in 1929 an American astronomer, uh, Edwin Hubble, came along, uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the story, discovered very two, import, uh, two very important things. The first was that the universe is a lot bigger than we thought it was. Things that we used to think were just entities within our own galaxy turn out to be galaxies of their own. But the second thing and, and more pertinent thing that he uh, discovered was that these, these galaxies are all moving away from us. And in fact, they're moving away from us at a speed that is proportional to their distance. That is, the further a galaxy is away, the faster it's moving away from us. Um, now, of course, we now recognize this to be indicative of an expanding universe. That is a universe that is not, in fact, static. And when Einstein realized this, when Einstein realized that the universe was expanding, he retracted his cosmological term, uh, realizing that it wasn't necessary. And he later called it his greatest blunder. Um, Einstein could have predicted years before uh, Edwin Hubble's observations that the universe was expanding, uh, but because he had a preconceived notion of the universe that he didn't want to give up, uh, he made his greatest error. The takeaway is this. Uh, you may be smart, but you're no Einstein. <laughs> if, if Albert Einstein is capable of holding a fallacious belief because of preconceived notions that he was unwilling to give up, then believe me, so can you and I.